got color. It's been kind of fun today. The challenges that have come our way are never meant to discourage us, but meant to encourage us. And boy, I gotta tell you, sometimes in the morning, one of the best ways to get my attention is just to let the normal, normal morning unfold. And you always have a choice whether you want to react to something in a negative way, in some way that is typical for most of us in the sense that you stub your toe, you say ow, you trip, you fall down, you knock over the camera like I did this morning and you go, cool, thank God it didn't fall down and break. <laughs> But those are the things that really reveal what type of person we are and how God has changed us from who we might have been to who we are today. And each and every day that you have a devotional, that you evotional, evo, so to speak, you get the opportunity to exercise your learning process to determine which way you'll go when you run into those circumstances that are part of everyday life. You see, some people think that when you get saved that everything automatically goes smooth. You'll always be healed, you'll always have everything you ever wanted, you'll, all your needs will be met and everything's just going to be smooth sailing. If it is for you, I'm happy. But I question if that's salvation or not, because that sounds like it's just uh, being taken care of, like a little baby in a crib. And I don't think Jesus came in order that we might have a crib life, or that abundant life is meant to simply be one of gimme, gimme, get, get, and I get to sit back and relax and nothing else need to be done. But I think that the normal life of a believer, of a person following Jesus, is one of change and development. That God brings about change in us by sometimes butting heads with us, sometimes Christians rubbing against us, and sometimes just us running into walls. <laughs> Realizing, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> that, to me, is real life. Or walking in the spirit or talking with God every day. Anything else is just games being played in the name of religion. So today, when God speaks to me, I take it personally. I hope you do too. Because my God is as personally real to me as you are watching. As the people I meet every day. Sometimes God is more real than the people I meet every day. Sometimes I wonder where they're coming from or if they are real. But in getting real, one of the things that we do is we bring ourselves to God to prepare us for the day and ask Him to direct us and to give us the strength for the day and the ability to know when He's saying, go to the left, go to the right, stand still, go forward, go back. Or get on your knees, <laughs> so to speak. God calling says, as God is calling us and speaking to us, the house on a rock. Be watchful to hear my voice and instantly to obey. Obedience is your great sign of faith. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Was my word when on earth to the many who followed and heard but did not do? I liken the man who heard and did not do to the man who built his house on the sand. In times of storm and trouble he is overthrown, his house falls. I liken the man who obeyed me implicitly to the man who built his house upon a rock. In times of storm he is steadfast, immovable. Do not feel that this, do not feel that by this I mean only the keeping of my commandments, even the living my sermon on the mount. I mean more than that to those who know me intimately. 
I mean the following in all, the inner guiding that I give, little injunctions I speak to each individual soul, the wish I express and desire to have carried out, the secure, steadfast, and movable life of my disciples. The rock home is not built at a wish in a moment, but is laid stone by stone, foundations, walls, roof, by the acts of obedience, the daily following out of my wishes, the loving doing of my will. And it is that rock home, man-made, but divinely inspired, the house of obedience, the truest expression of a disciple's adoration and worship is there. I come to dwell with my loved ones. You know, I've always had that thought that if God is real, why aren't we listening? I mean, frankly, why don't we ask him for everything that we do? Do you get out of bed automatically, or do you ask God, hey, Lord, you, know, you want me to get up, or you want me to lay in bed? <laughs> if you ask my wife on the weekend, she wants to lay in bed. <laughs> Maybe the Lord said yes. But I'm not kidding. I really think that God wants to be so personally involved in our life that every moment of the day, we could be directed to be avoiding some of the issues that come up. A gang member that's down the street that has a gun that might be ready to shoot the public. A traffic light that isn't working and there's another car coming. And that if you're not paying attention to what God might be saying, maybe he's telling you not to take the car today, to go for a walk. Maybe on your way to a church or maybe on your way to your job, God might have said, don't go someplace or to inspire you to take a different route. You see, the wind bloweth with her will. You need to know where it's coming from or where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God isn't leading you in order to have both the Spirit of God in it. He's leading you because He wants you to know God intimately and personally. And the more that you do these things and yield to them, the more you see that God is that real about every single hair on your head, every single moment of your life, every breath that you take, every move you make, even as the songs sing it and people worship it, that's not really what they do in day-to-day -day living, but you should do those things. Because, if you live on the banks of the Mississippi River and it floods, hey, did you build your house upon the sand and a water area that floods regularly? When your house gets washed off the cliff, did it get washed down the hill because you built it on a cliff? You knew you had it on a cliff. When you live in Tornado Alley, and tornadoes come every year, did you have a tornado shelter built? And did you expect someday you might have your house torn down? No. None of those things do people think about, really, except to take out insurance. But Jesus said, the life of a Christian, of a believer, is one that your house, the body you live in, doesn't need to be torn down when trials come and you don't need to run around like a panic-stricken sheep, but that you could be a solid rock, a foundation for others to find comfort and strength when their house on a cliff falls off, their home by a river is flooded, when their whole world comes to an end because they didn't build their house upon a rock but they built it upon sand. I take personally every single detail of my life. I look at it and say, Lord, do you want me to put that picture there? What does it mean to me? What does it designate? How do I look at that? Father, where can I put a plant that works better for your glory that I would be inspired by that it would also offer up to you the sacrifice of praise? Where would a table, what kind of table, what would be better for sitting on the porch and being able to be reminded of you. All these things, in my mind, happen in devotionals. So in your devotion, I hope that you take just as real and as serious as God is about you, you are about God. Because he wants you to know every detail of him as he knows every detail about you.